Tow compensation for medium and low suspension paramotors is super simple and super easy. It doesn't bring really ideal results, but it's the second best we have. This is part 14 of the insights into paramotor geometry. We continue with paramotor talk. Before we start, please make sure you have watched the previous videos, especially part 12 and 13. medium suspension and the low bars we have two ways how to compensate torque first is the pendulum effect which is absolutely automatic and second is the bar offset the pendulum auto balance effect as explained in the previous video works the best with high suspension system and the lower you get the suspension the least auto balance pendulum you have put simply if you suspend the paramotor up high it will automatically bounce back when torque is applied you get the least pendulum auto balance with the low suspension system medium being obviously somewhere in the middle As a starting position, we have the carabiner symmetric. Here are my carabiners. Here's the center of gravity of the pilot and paramotor together. Now, if the distance between the carabiner and the center of gravity on each side is equal, then you get the load perfectly evenly distributed onto both carabiners. Now, if you have a paramotor that is torque steering to the right, you need to put a bit more load on the left side to compensate. And to do that, you just move your carabiners to the right, both. That is, the left carabiner gets a bit more to the center and uh, the right carabiner goes further away. Now, now your center of gravity is closer to the left carabiner. This means a larger portion of your weight is loaded onto the left carabiner, the left carabiner gets more load and it's effectively weight shifting to the left. Based on uh, my experience, approximately 25 millimeter offset is needed for an average pilot of an average engine to maintain level flight. Now, this is a good indication of how powerful the torque is because you get roughly 15 kilograms more load on left side than on the right to maintain straight flight. Now let's see how it looks in flight. So this is the chart you already know from my previous videos. I have the RPM on the propeller and torque, which is a square function that is rapidly increasing with propeller speed. I need roughly 1800 RPM on my prop to maintain level flight. And if the paramotor is designed properly and has sufficient offset on the carabiners, I will get exactly necessary amount of torque compensation for my level flight and during my level flight the paramotor would behave balanced. If the offset is less than one inch on the inside, the torque compensation will probably not be sufficient, that is, your green area moves down and if you need this much RPM you will end up flying in the red zone which means your paramotor is not balanced. You will definitely fly in the red zone when you push the speed bar. Let's see how it looks. You absolutely go out of the green zone because the torque compensation remains the same but you suddenly end up flying at a lot, at a lot higher RPM and facing a lot more torque. So at full speed bar, you need to compensate torque steering with your brake toggles or your tip steering on your glider. So the final summary for bar and carabiner offsets. Advantages, obviously super simple solution, no maintenance, no care about. Disadvantages, torque compensation is set to a certain level by design, by construction. You, uh, there's nothing you can do about that. Sometimes the torque compensation is just not sufficient even for the level flight, which is pretty annoying in that case. And third, torque compensation with the bar offset is not adjustable. So if you happen to need more RPM, let's say for a climb out or full speed bar flight, you have to fight the torque on your own.
with the medium and low suspension systems you may easily end up having some residues of torque that are not compensated and you need to fight them on your own. Now the, the best way to fight them is weight shift. Luckily with the medium and low suspension system you have good weight shift authority so please do that. The other way is pulling the opposite brake. Holding the brake all the time might be pretty annoying and uncomfortable. That's why some pilots tend to set one side of the trimmers higher than the other ones. Put simply, if your paramotor is torque steering to the right and you set the right side trimmer uh, higher, the right side of the glider will become faster and will turn back to straight flight. I would discourage you to do that because in case of a collapse, uh, the recovery might be affected as one side of the glider has different geometry than the other. In case of an overshoot, the, the glider may react asymmetric as well and you never know what's going to happen. The last method of compensating torque is the scout dynamic torque compensation that we will cover and explain in the next video. Stay with us, please hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching, thanks for sharing, see you soon.